Victoria, hey, hey. give me some elbow to elbow. What? Oh, we, we, there we go. We're okay, doing the punch. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, hey, Jimmy, welcome to Conversations with Jimmy. That's good to be me. Yeah, it's been a while since uh, we've been back. Uh, many of you from the congregation have said that you um, enjoy the information shared and endure the chitter chatter that happens. But no, we do want to continue to connect with you um, and let you know what is going on. I know we're not meeting as often as we would like to, um, but we're glad that we're able to share with you some information here. And with us we have... Is this when I say my name? You introduce Jimmy, but you don't introduce me? <laughs> no, go ahead. Because this no, is Conversations not, with Jimmy, not, not we, Conversations with Justice. This is not going well. with right. Jimmy. Okay, not all right. Justice. This Conversation with Jimmy is also featuring Justice Coppinger and Victoria Gonzalez. So we're excited that y'all are here. Uh, you have been uh, in a, a very exciting part of our youth ministry this summer. And uh, tell us one thing that has stood out to you, a positive that you've gotten to be a part of with the youth group so far this summer. This is the part where you, you guys tell us one good, like, right, like, no. <laughs> cue. Um, it's been good to be able to have a schedule despite the unscheduledness and to be able to be like, yeah, on Wednesdays we hang out and on Tuesdays we go get tacos. And so that's been really good seeing everybody on the schedule. <laughs> got kind of a schedule going on okay and I would say kind of the same thing but from a different viewpoint of normally you come and summers for youth groups look like you go on these mission trips you go to these camps there's all these things planned out for you whereas we came and we had to plan everything from scratch and I think that was really good because that forced us to think outside the box. Yeah. And come up yeah. with something new. Right before y'all got here, we had to wipe the slate clean. So, <laughs> well, we didn't know week to week what it was going to look like. Yeah. Oh, so, <laughs> again, I just want to, we'll go ahead and take this opportunity to say thank y'all. Y'all have done an awesome job. And I uh, want to thank uh, Carolyn Worley, John and Cheryl Rich, and uh, the Millikans, uh, Jack and Karen Millican, for housing y'all. And my wife is and I are housing you now. <laughs> And we're very excited about that. But this is this is not conversation. This is conversation with Jimmy. Jimmy. So, yeah. um, so Jimmy, what is happening now? What is happening different? What do we need to know about that's happening here with our KCC family as far as processes uh, it, coming to the worship assemblies? Yeah. Uh, what, what's going on right now? Well, we, we had, had an a, elders meeting yesterday. We did had an elders meeting uh, yesterday afternoon, and um, one of the the main topics of discussion was uh, how are we going to proceed? Uh, we're taking two week uh, bites out of our uh, schedule, trying to figure out, okay, now what are we gonna do? Listening to what Governor Abbott is saying, trying to listen to the spirit, um, listening to our church family, trying to figure out, you know, what, what's the, uh, the balance of uh, uh, our people thinking would be safest for us to do. Our local authorities, what, what are they deciding? That's, that's been a little bit, you know, you know Mayor says this, uh, Abbott says this, and trying to how, how we figure all that out. So we meet, we pray, we say, God, what do you want us to do as a family? And what we come up with is just simply this, uh, more of the same of what we're doing right now as far as worship goes. We're going to continue to have uh, a strong recommendation that you bring masks with you. We're not making it a mandate. Uh, but I would say probably 95% uh, of the people that are coming on Sunday morning are wearing masks. What that does is enable those who wouldn't come without people wearing them uh, to come. Uh, we're also having temperatures that we're taking at the door. Uh, the elders uh, said, let's go ahead and keep, keep doing that. That hasn't, uh, doesn't seem like it's kept people away. It could be a little bit of a nuisance, uh, but what we're trying to say to the church and to one another is, uh, this really isn't about facts. Uh, this really isn't about uh, what this particular expert says or this particular expert says. It's saying, how can I value you above me? And if, it, if, if this particular issue makes someone feel more comfortable to come and be with their family, we want to try to go to that nth degree and do that. Uh, we can do that. that that's, we're going to talk about this next week. That's just the, uh, a base level humility, uh, letting someone else needs be uh, rank higher than mine. So we're going to be doing that. Um, and right now, as far as our classes, we've bumped back. Uh, when our, our start, start date was going to be, we were aiming for August 16th. That's been scratched. And now we're moving it back to the, the Sunday after um, Labor Day weekend. Yeah, and I thought that that was a really good um, 
thought process of thinking about that, it wasn't just, well, let's just delay the inevitable. inevitable. It's the fact that our schools are starting back, That's right. and we're trying to see what exactly is going to happen in our community uh, with uh, the spread of COVID, how the, uh, you know, the herd becomes immune, or how it continues to spread. And right. so with school starting on the, I think it's the 16th of August, um, you know, and our, our school district is even divided how they want to do it. Right. Kids today are able to register whether they want to start virtual classes. They have to do it for a whole six weeks or show up in person. Sure. So so our local government and, and our people are, are still divided on what is best. And, well, what and I love about that is, is, again, it puts the, the choice back in the home. And we're doing the same thing with our church family. Um, we, we want you to feel comfortable about coming and being a part of a worship experience, whether that's something that you view online. We're trying to make that as excellent as we possibly can for all those who don't feel it's worth risking their health to come. Uh, and for those who, who see um, reasonable risk, uh, as opposed to going to the grocery store or other places that they go, especially with the masking, especially with the distancing here in our congregation, um, it seems like it's, it's been a beneficial way for us to make decisions for the whole family. It's saying you make the priority decision at home, what you feel comfortable with, but here's what we think our family can enjoy as a whole. Yeah, yeah. and you mentioned uh, the wearing of the masks. Uh, we're asking that we do that as we walk around, sure. as you come in and out, and we've actually added an, added an extra exit for people as we exit. But uh, once we sit down, we're, right. we're, yeah, we're saying you can leave it on or you can take it off. And some people are leaving it on, some people are leaving it off. And so we're leaving that as a matter of discretion for sure. people. And so uh, I appreciate that about um, the way we're doing it. And like you said, it leaves it up to the person. And we're asking each person as they take their freedom to consider those around them as well. Absolutely. So I think that's great. Man, you have... Uh, <laughs> Uh, I had a conversation with uh, one of my daughters this past week, and uh, man, it, it's almost like you're taking a uh, a good two by four and you're hitting me in between the eyes. <laughs> uh, I just can't I can't escape this idea of being strangers in a strange land. Uh, it's a strange time. It, it is, and the call, uh, the way that Peter's talking about, it and the way that you're challenging us has just been. Uh, I can't escape it. There's, uh, it, it is a clear call to all Christ followers that, man, we're, we, we, we got to look like strangers. If we're expecting to go somewhere different after this world, then we need to be someone different in this world. Absolutely. So tell us a little bit more about where your heart's on that, where we're going, what do you want to bring back up to us? Well, the heart really is in our mission statement. Uh, and that's, you know, our goal is, is to influence, to lead ordinary, everyday people into an extraordinary relationship with Christ. And to do that, that, that just sets up a, a dichotomy or contrast. Those who are far from God and those who know God, uh, you have to be different to make an influence on something. If you just pour more water into more water, you have more water. And so Jesus comes into a world that's very self-centered, very prideful, very focused on its way, and says, let me show you how I do this with my focus on the Father. Uh, and, and, and the end result is not what's here, but where we're, we're going to be with Father in, the, in the presence of God. So, so. Peter's saying that's not changed for 2,000 years. Cultures have changed and, and clothing has changed and po politics has changed. And, but Jesus has said the way a person loves on another person really it hasn't from the beginning. I mean, there's still patience and kindness and gentleness and self-control. And, and he's, he came to show us that that has a lot more to do with who I am than what I wear. Uh, although that can be one of the distinctive uh, ways in which we are strange to this world especially when the culture begins to move uh, away from uh, the inside of parts of, of, of what makes, a, makes a, a man or a woman handsome or beautiful to God is not, um, when, when that's not seen because all of a sudden now what's outside is so distracted from that, then all of a sudden that becomes a problem. We, and so we talked about that Sunday and we had some interesting uh, conversations this week because of the yeah. bikini sermon. <laughs> yes, that's that's what we labeled it online, right? We just put yeah. bikini sermon. But I also heard you you challenge uh, me with the phrase, um, not only how I view uh, women, however they're dressed, but how I react to this world in light of what God has called me. He says, "Be holy, because I am holy." So, 
hit more on that or what's the what's the call on that as far as being strangers where 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 do you see that as far as the challenge to our congregation um what 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 what, what part does that play in the heart of what peter's trying to say this that like call to holiness i think it's everything i think it's um it's it's like when you're driving in a car uh they all, those that instruct you say you're you're the car's going to go wherever your eyes are looking mm. and so where am i looking for my cues in this world about what's important to my family or where am I looking for what my cues are about what how I respond when when someone, I'm angry with someone or frustrated or how I respond uh, when I'm married and and in the moment I click chemistry with someone else that's female how do I respond with that how do, there's there's how I meet life and and how I how I plan on my my finances where I I give God the first uh, of, of the things that God he blesses me with or do I give him the leftovers all of that is where am I taking my cues? And Jesus says it across the board, you're going to become like your teacher. So that's why I ask the question, who's teaching you? Who's your primary person that you go to to go, that's who I want to be like? And God says, would you make that me? And, and scripture says, he's holy, holy, holy. And, and yeah, but he's invisible. No, no, he wasn't because he became visible and walked among us and said, here's what holiness looks like in a human body. And so we're going, okay, we're going to follow him instead of the latest uh, pop star or instead of the latest country music singer or the latest politician we we that's who we're going to follow and jesus rocked the world and it hasn't been the same since and so we can do the same thing uh, but we're going to look distinctly different because he did even even amongst his religious peers yeah wow um so with us today we've got justice and victoria and um they both heard this challenge. In fact, we really appreciate your gifts on Sunday of leading us Amen. in worship. And uh, and kind of an unsung hero becomes Victoria. She's the one who's usually changing the slides <laughs> on, right. on this TV. She's a quiet um, riot. She is. She's doing great. So thank you all both for helping us in our worship experience as a, as a family. Um, but what do you all hear for your generation and, and for our teens? But what do you hear is the greatest challenge in this call to holiness? I would say particularly for college age, high school age, young men, a huge challenge is apathy. And what, what I mean by that is you look at Jesus' life and Jesus is the one who cared about people who weren't cared about. And as young men, there's this perception that, that the world shows us that you should only care about what you want to care about and shouldn't have to care about anything else. So for instance, I'm in choir at York College, so does that mean that I show up to choir, only hang out with choir people at college, I only eat with those people, that's the only people I'm gonna look for someone to date, all these things. It's very, it's very much this narrow road subjectivity that, um, because it's easy, that's what's easy. It's easy to only be involved in a few things and not um, try and get a better understanding of everyone around you. So I would say, um, in response to that, I would say young men need to, while while in this culture is calling us to have one path and one thing that we focus on, we need to broaden our horizons and talk to people who aren't like us and um, love those people, just like Jesus did, and not try and put ourselves in their shoes because... I'm not going to fit in someone else's shoes, but just try and love them through their life experiences and what they're going through. Mm. While pursuing holiness. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, that's, that was, that's definitely a challenge. What do you see as a challenge uh, to this call to holiness for, uh, for think, you or your generation? Um, there's just this huge stigma between being an individual and having this mindset of no one's going to tell me what to do um you know the feminist movement has been super huge and that's all about it's about me and my body and my decisions and everything that i get to do right. um and so holiness has become kind of unpopular um i think it's become difficult to talk because to talk about because there's these lines that some women will cross and yet if they cross it just a little bit they're completely unholy, but right. if they get right next to it, they're just there, you know? Yeah. Like, I don't know if I wear a crop top, I'm not unholy, am I? But if I wear a bikini, 
that you know and so there's this like kind of just stigma of not knowing what lines to cross and then crossing them and realizing oh that wasn't really holy or oh <laughs> I felt super called out on Sunday I wonder why um and so just like navigating through that and through all this individualism with women and with girls and young girls um and trying to want to set be set apart but also fitting in <laughs> yeah there's always a tension in it mm -hmm. and that's the hard is navigating the tension and pendulum swing uh whether you want to say conservative, liberal, or however you want to deem those uh, extremes, uh, but, but that's Jesus was extreme. He was mm -hmm. radical, and and that's what's what's difficult is, is which radical part of me do I want to identify with? And I think for for me, it's what benefits me connecting with people. What benefits me? And again, that's why I asked the question for the church: Are you more of a bridge or more of a barrier to drawing people into Christ or pushing them away? And, uh, and if, if, how, if whatever my speech is or whatever my dress is uh, causes people to, to think of things that really have nothing to do with holiness or kindness or purity or righteousness, then I'm being a barrier. Uh, if, if it draws people into that and makes them uh, more to get out of themselves, uh, it, it helps them to, uh, to respond to people in a way that, wow, I, that's kind. And, and when you see true kindness in the world, you go, oh my goodness, that's amazing. That's drawing people into the walk that we hope that they'll enjoy. Oh, wow. Thank you all for your honesty. You know, um, God's called us to a path, and we still need to love other people. We don't need to try on their path of unrighteousness, uh, but we do need to love them and care for them and be that bridge. Um, and, man, the culture around us is calling us to do your own thing and don't judge me. Only God can judge me. Well, but God has spoken. He's told us how he's going to judge us. He's called us to be holy. And none of us are good enough to be holy. But his grace comes and makes us holy. And when we're living in that grace, uh, we're going to make mistakes. Uh, I, mean, I make one occasionally, Jimmy. I think you've witnessed one. Twice. Twi twice. Just twice. Okay. And, and well, that's in five seen, years, though. Yeah, you've seen all of them in five years. No. <laughs> so uh, thank God for his grace Amen. Uh, in that call to holiness. So. Uh, anything else you want to share? Or do you want to get no, this week we're going to be talking about humility. We've talked about hope. We've talked about holiness. And then this week we're going to be looking at humility. Uh, and th those are just three things that Peter uh, would say, I, that's not who I was, but because of Christ in my life. Uh, this, is, this is how he's changed me and uh, grown me up. So where are we going to be headed? Um, well, I, I want to challenge you to read First Peter through and through. Uh, once a day. It's an easy book, but man, the challenges to the people there 2,000 years ago are so reflected in the life that we're Absolutely. living now. So That's the wonder uh, of the Bible. It is. So I've got a list here of some things that, that we want to be praying about um, uh, and people who are popping up new. Um, if you've got our bulletin for su from Sunday, I want to encourage you to, to just be praying over those names and uh, and just be very, uh, very mindful of those families. Drop them a card. Uh, some of you have a relationship with them already. Call them, text them, uh, check on them. We've got people who are finally able to have some surgery. Uh, we've got people who are in quarantine due to the coronavirus. We've got people who are waiting on transplants to um, recovering and on a long journey like our brother James Houston. Uh, Donna. Uh, is back in she town. Back. Uh, not the Donna Leonard's, Houston. The Leonard's have arrived. Donna Leonard, and she has held that grandchild of hers that is half <laughs> her size. Uh, uh, a little text, is that it? So, um, but we we definitely want to do that. And you can actually get your bulletin from the the KCC notes that uh, Miss Vicky sends out um, weekly. So, one I want to encourage you to grab that and pray through that list and. Um, and just continue to love on people around you. Be a bridge and just challenge yourself. Uh, ask the Spirit to lead you down that path of holiness. Um, so, brother, if you want to close out in prayer for uh, things we've talked about in our country, our nation, our friends, whatever is on your heart, let's Got it. finish out. Father, thank you uh, for the gift of this day. We don't take it for granted, especially in these times when so many people's health are, uh, are they're just struggling and they don't know what tomorrow holds for them as far as uh, breathing their next breath or whether uh, they're going to be uh, 
enduring a lifelong illness. Father, right now, we're, we're just grateful for uh, the chance to be able to enjoy this day. And for those that are a part of that list that Ricky mentioned, uh, we lift them up to you and ask for your grace and mercy to be poured out into their lives. Uh, whatever they're struggling with physically, relationally, financially, uh, we know that the answers lie in you. And uh, you've also allowed us to be a part of those answers through your church. So just ask for you to please continue to help us as we as we not, not just want to be strange for uh, just oddity's sake. Uh, we, we're not trying to stand out. Uh, Father, actually, if anything, we're trying to reach out. And uh, we realize that that's, uh, that's what your son came to do. We want to, we want to mimic him. We want to um, uh, follow in his footsteps. And I just thank you for the two interns that you sent uh, th this year. I thank you so much for Justice. Thank you for Victoria. The examples that they've been, the energy that they brought to our church. Um, they've just hit the ground serving. And, uh, and that has just been a joy to be around. So please continue to bless our ministry as they finish out the next couple of weeks with us. And then even where you're taking them now, we know this is just one, one small chapter in their lives, uh, but just blessings upon them. Uh, Father, bless us, bless our elders. Uh, they bear a heavy weight of trying to determine, okay, what can we do so that the most of our family can be together? They really are like spiritual parents right now, trying to figure out how, how we navigate this family through some troubled waters and troubled times. So please bless them with peace, uh, bless them with wisdom, bless them with courage. And I just pray for a church that's hugely supportive of uh, their efforts to try to do this for family and that uh, we all will humble ourselves and try to do the best we can uh, for each other, not just what we think, not just what we want, uh, but for what we can, who we can be in the body of Christ. Because we know the world's watching and we want so much for them to see um, you and us. So please make that possible through the power of your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So... It was good to see our brother Raymond yesterday. He's recovering a little bit from his illness, was able to join us. So that's good. I want to thank all our church family who's loving on our friend and your friend too, but that's important. So we're going to leave on a positive note. Uh, not that this has been a downer, but on a more positive note, I asked y'all, what is, what is the hope in the challenge or in the pursuit of hol holiness that you hope to see in your, in your generation? What is, what is that? And Victoria, we'll let you go first. What is the hope that you have in that challenge? Well, I mean, with what I said, there's this movement of wanting to um, kind of come out of this being in the shadows. And my hope is that women ask questions and go to the Bible and really challenge what God says to me and to them. And they can see what that looks like in 2020 and beyond. Oh, man, so take God's word as a challenge and, and really pursue it. Uh, that's awesome. That would be a great hope. What about you? And adding on to that and the idea of, you know, taking God's word, we look, just challenging young men to look at the example of Jesus in the Bible. Who did Jesus spend the most time with? Why was, why was Jesus spending time with him? What, how, was, was Jesus the kind of person that made his life all about himself, or did he wash his disciples' feet? And I think that's something that young men should really challenge themselves with. Man, that sounds like a life set apart right there, both of those. So mm -hmm. thank you all so much. And I'll let y'all continue y'all's rock, paper, scissor, or staring contest. But uh, I got to go. So thank y'all so much for joining Wednesday Conversation with Jimmy. Bye. A couple more announcements for all of you. First off, Jesse B. Bolton and uh, was traveling with her group from Camp Blue Haven, brought about seven counselors, and we were able to worship with them and hang out, play some spike ball with them at an outside location. And so it was really great as a youth group to be able to stay encouraged, especially for the kids that would normally attend Blue Camp Blue Haven. Mm -hmm. So uh, please keep that group in your prayers as they continue to travel to locations all over Texas and New Mexico. And speaking of group gatherings, Way Cool Wednesdays has been postponed due to um, the spike of COVID-19 and due to the fact that this week's event was just not going to work for social distancing for the kids as much. So make sure you check out waycoolwednesdays.com to see the dates for more Way Cool Wednesdays events in the future. The next one, if I'm not mistaken, should be July 29th. Um, so we are super excited as a youth group to be able to go to Camp Eagle this weekend. We are so pumped and so excited, but we're obviously taking um, many measures to keep us safe and the campers safe and the um, 
counselors there too as well safe um the counselors that are at camp eagle right now are some church members like aubrey pruitt Haley fair and kristen williams and so please be praying for them as they continue to see campers and be praying for us the campers that are coming this weekend with us will be us and ricky and cindy schrader so pray for her um we have the arms kids um gabe elms gabe, gavin hankins cassie Harmon. The Pruitt, so Laurel and Cooper, Lauren Rogers, and William Warner. So please keep them in your prayers as we um, go this weekend. As I said, we're so excited. We're ready to be out in the wilderness, um, but please continue to pray for us.